welcome to the Josh Herdman interview. I'd like to welcome Josh Herdman. Can you have a round of applause for Josh, everyone? Thank you. Hello. You all right? All right. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you and your wife on your beautiful wedding. Thank you. Hi. We've been together 14 years, so it made sense. It's going to say, was it, was it a nice day? Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. A few hiccups. There always is. Which is kind of normal, I guess. Yeah, there always is a wedding. So it's something always goes wrong. Yeah. Spider Man. Spider Man is somewhere. Uh, yeah. It was oh, good. Very good day. Good. Good. Right, so you're widely known as Gregory Goyle. Yeah. From the Harry Potter series. How has that role impacted your life? Um, and career a lot yeah a lot I often think like where would I be what would I be doing if I didn't get yeah get the part uh, a lot of experience a lot of memories a lot of um, yeah it's really life changing yeah I mean but like unfortunately Goyle was a relatively small part I mean he's always he's always there kind of yeah with the Slytherins with Malfoy yeah um, but, the, but the part wasn't quite big enough to, uh, you know, to put me on the map sort of thing. So still a struggling actor. Um, yeah, just, uh, just still trying to sort of chip away at the auditions and, and um, just be patient, I guess. Because you, with this acting game, you just don't know. I mean, it's, it sounds a kind of cliche, but you really just don't know what's around the corner. You could, I could get an audition next week I could be perfect for it and it could completely change my life um, again like just like Harry Potter basically so uh, yeah so I think that's why you, you stick at it um, I was talking to uh, another actor the other week about the audition process and how you haven't got, haven't got to take it personally because you, you might not just be what they're looking for on the day because it, it could literally be you could give the world's best audition, but at the end of the day, you've got black hair. Exactly. Yeah. That's, and that's how fickle it can be. That's totally, yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, you, a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, I think that they've made their mind up before you, before you even opened your mouth. Yeah. Because the character that's been written, the producers, the director, they have a, a mental vision in their head of what the, what the character is, of who the character is. And you either match that or you don't. So I guess that's when you would go to the second stage to get a recall. You know, you go to the second auditions. That's, <coughs> that's because you do fit the, the vision yeah. that they've got. And then they want to see if you can actually pull it off. Yeah, you've, you've got the look now. You've got the talent to go yeah. with it. Because, um, yeah, what the thing you're saying is that in this industry, the, what, the one, word, one word, you could describe it with one word, is resilience. You need to have resilience. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean... Uh, You've really got to have a thick skin, uh, totally. Uh, if you don't, then you just end up uh, you know, crying a lot. <laughs> There's no time to spend three days in bed. You didn't get a part. You've got to move on to the next audition. Yeah, but it's really hard to, though. It's hard. I can, I can imagine it would be really hard doing that. It's, it's harder as a kid as well, you know. Kids are resilient, very resilient. But, you know, I remember as a kid, my dad would say, I've been acting since I was seven. My dad would say, go to the audition, just forget about it. It's, it's easier said than done, but now I can do that. Now, no matter how good the audition is, how, how perfect I think I am for the part, I can just sort of put it to the back of my head. Just carry forget on. Forget about it. If you get a recall, that's, that's a bonus. But, I mean, there, Jim Kerry talks about it a lot, is a um, positive mental visual, visualisation and manifestation and yeah. stuff. And there is something to be said for that, I think. Um... I'm kind of not really one of those people, I guess. So after your experience on the Harry Potter films, and then you've continued acting. Um, Bits and bobs, yeah. Has there been any highlights or challenges to the, you know, when you transition to different roles and genres? Um, the thing with, I, I, I've not done no, no way near enough as I, was, as I would like to have done. Um, you know, it's it's just a really tricky industry to 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 tackle. Um, but 
what what I find what I find sometimes is more. To, I've done like a short film where I played an MMA fighter. I was in a, a, a an episode of Strike Back with um, Warren Warren Brown. I can't remember his name, um, but. Uh, for some of those kind of roles, I, I, I had to be an MMA fighter, and you—it's uh, just like cutting weight for a, not cutting weight, but dieting before a fight. And it's just horrible because the choice—you have no choice. You have to look like this. You have to have a six pack. You have to. No, I was watching watching about this, and people, some of the people said they have to have to dehydrate themselves before. Oh yeah, that's 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 cutting water weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I never did that. I just dieted. Yeah. I was just religious with my dieting. Um, and it's so depressing not being not having that uh, not having the option to eat <laughs> when you when you love food, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. So when you were doing the Harry Potter films, you were a child. So what are the challenges for when you grow like growing up growing up because you grew up on the Harry Potter films? So how did you navigate being a child actor and growing up? Um, I was I was quite uh, lucky, I guess, because because Goyle was a smaller part. It's not like I couldn't go to the shops. I wouldn't get mobbed. <laughs> I have been mobbed, but it's only like two or like two or three times. Um, so I got to live the best of both worlds. I had my personal life, which was relatively so un personal, un un uninterrupted. Yeah. And, then, and I had the Harry, Harry Potter life as well. Uh, my, my, my schedule was, was pretty um, random. So I'll be on the set for a couple of weeks doing this scene. Then I'll be off for a week. Then I'll be back for a few days, off, on, off, on, off. It's not like I was there the whole time. So I still maintain uh, friendships outside of Harry, Harry Potter as well. So, but, you know, the main guys... They did. They. I don't think they really did. They didn't have much, um, especially Dan. I don't. I don't think he had much. Many friends outside of it. Now, during during Harry Potter, Crab got replaced. Yeah. So Jimmy was replaced with Louis. Yeah. Which must have been. I mean, difficult transition because difficult things were happening behind the scenes. Yeah. Um. So how did? How did that all affect? And how did you? Managed to cope with well, the. I did. I felt sorry for Jamie. You know, um, you know, but they, they did what they had to do. They, they, he had had lots of. He'd been let off quite, a, quite a few other things, um, and they did what they had to do. But it didn't stop me feeling sorry for him. I mean, uh, I mean, just generally in, in, in life, I think he was just. It, 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 Besides getting Harry Potter and landing a role in one of the biggest movies, but besides that, generally in his life he'd been dealt a, a pretty crappy hand, to be honest. Uh, and you know, Jamie was never an actor. He was he was scouted from from primary school. That so, does make a difference. Yeah, I mean, I've been acting since I was seven. I've done like a bunch of TV commercials. I've done a little episode of this, a little episode of that. I knew how to behave on set. Well, yeah, to a certain extent. Um, <laughs> I wasn't an angel. Uh, and a lot of the actors were, you know, we'd grown up in in this um, industry, yeah. industry yeah. you know. So, but Jamie, he's taken from his primary school in Kilburn, which is a rough area. He came from a rough part of London, and he's thrown into this Warner Brothers set. And without, without any sort of... Uh, guidance really or any uh, they don't give you like a, a a briefing or they don't give you any training on how to do that how to behave on a that, set that's harsh you know so he, he, he was he found it quite hard i think uh, and he played up a lot of the time but um just the way it is i guess you, a lot i think yeah you, you just got scouted so it's just yeah it's the way the way it was and yeah so then, then louis came in so what was it like Started to, started to build a bond with Louis and working with Louis. Well, Louis, we knew, we all knew Louis already. Because he, he was the stunt double for yeah, one he, of the kids earlier, was a, wasn't he? He was a yeah. double for yeah. uh, Alfie Enoch. Yeah. Um, Dean Thomas. 
And then uh, I think he made such an impression with the producers. I think he, he was very like sort of a well, well behaved professional. And he made a good impact on the producers. He's got, got a good look. So it made sense to bring him in as Blazer Beanie. And to be honest, no, 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 uh, no disrespect to Louis. I love Louis. But it, it, it felt odd without, without, it, without it being crab, uh, yeah. Malfoy, Crab and Boyle. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, uh, just the, the, way, the way it was. And I think, I think he did a good job as Blazer Beanie. Uh, but yeah, it felt, it did feel a bit odd. And obviously, Crab was meant to die. In the, well, he dies in the book, and then Goyle gets saved. And then uh, I was saying to, uh, to somebody earlier this story that the producers called me in, and they was like, uh, oh, well, you know, Jamie's no longer with us. Uh, we had to get rid of him. And so we were thinking, how do you feel that Goyle dies instead of Crab, and we're going we're gonna to save Blaise Sabini? And they was always like asking me, like, how do you feel about that? And I was <laughs> like, well, I don't really have a choice. <laughs> uh, but it's awesome. I was like, Great. I get, I, get a, I get a death scene in Harry Potter. That's well cool. Uh, yeah. I was like, awesome. But as an actor, a death scene is quite a cool thing to do, you know? If that wasn't me, I would have dragged that death scene on for a good half hour. Sorry? So if that was me, I would have dragged on that death scene for a good half hour. <laughs> really I would have been flailing on the floor and everything. Really ham it up. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It would have been absolutely the most tragic death scene. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you mentioned earlier about MMA, but you, you, you also have, a, have actually have an interest in MMA, don't you? I, I what? Actually have an interest in MMA. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love MMA. Um, I'm not an avid... I'm not. I don't watch it religiously, but when I was doing my martial arts training, uh, I got really into it. Um, yeah. Now, has that had any effect on your life? Has it learned, taught you anything? Oh yeah, yeah, big time. Um, I think martial arts and uh, it teach, teaches you discipline. Um, a, a discipline, not, not, not like the discipline that you, your parents give you when you're a kid. It's, it's more like fitness and your body and uh, cont self-control. Um, yeah, I think every child sh should, be, should be made to do a martial art because there's no negative to it. Well, the only negative is that you could get hurt. Like, well, you know, you get hurt playing you a game. You get hurt of, doing anything. Yeah, exactly. You get hurt, you stub your toe. You get hurt doing anything. Uh, but, you know, you get discipline, you get fitness, you get self-defense, you know how to handle yourself if you have to. It's just, uh, yeah, it's really good. And also the, the fighting, the MMA, it kind of felt a little bit like an initiation for me. It's like, I, uh, I've said it before, but I, I learned a lot about myself uh, going through that whole process twice. Uh, you know, the mental and physical preparation you have to do for a fight. You know, going into a cage and fighting someone you don't know. But, uh, yeah, you learn a lot about yourself, man. I bet you do. <laughs> now, we were, we were talking last night about um, an indie film that you've done. You started doing it in 2016. Yeah. Because um, you'll, be you'll be going to the film festival in Estonia. Yeah, Tallinn, yeah. yeah. Tallinn Film Festival. With it. So can you tell us about, tell us about that? Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I was cast in a film called it was called giant land yeah. then but they've since changed the name to no way home um by uh, uh a director he'd won a bafta for his short film his name's yusuf ali khan and uh I, I i shot the film in 2016 and i remember looking at the playback looking at the rushes and the photography was just beautiful it was really good really good looking movie um but then nothing happened of it. They'd be finished, we wrapped on it, and then I think they either ran out of money in post-production, they couldn't, they couldn't finish it. Um, so I didn't hear anything for years. <laughs> and I think it was either the first or the second lockdown, either just before or just after, when they'd just, um, you know, uh, they'd let you do more stuff. Yeah. It, was just, it was just easing off the restrictions. And I went and uh, got a call from the director. He said, uh, do you want to come and do some ADR for this film? Which is, uh, they take, you go to a sound studio and the film's edited and finished, but you, you record yeah. the, 
the stuff we say uh, that if the sound was bad on the day, you just re record yeah. the sound. So I did that, and then again, nothing. Just, just didn't hear it, nothing, like uh, for a year, two years, three years, however long the pandemic was ago. Um, and about three weeks ago, he calls me up again, the director. He says, oh, right, we finished the film. He was like, and it's premiering at a film festival in uh, Estonia, Tallinn Film Festival, which is not a bad festival. It's, it's not like a top one, but it's, 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 it's not. It's known about, it's a known festival, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not, it's not by, by any means uh, down at the bottom. No. Um, yeah, do you want to come and watch it there? I was like, yeah, 100%. So I still haven't seen the film, but I'm going to see it uh, next week. Yeah. I'd say you can see the trailer for it on IMDb because I was watching that. You play you play the character of Jason in it, which is the stepdad of the Kate main, main character yeah. in it, who is just the nasty piece of work, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's real horrible. He's just not a nice person. Really horrible, uh, racist, horrible man, basically. Um, and he's like, he's quite, he's quite a, um, quite a crucial character to the storyline because um, he's a, he's a stepdad of the of the of the of the leading kid, um, and all the, all the kid wants is a dad. So, and his stepdad is anything but you know it's the, it's the opposite of what you'd want as a, as a as a young kid. Um, it was. It's quite fun to play that. Though. It's, I, 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 I was going to say, what was it like, like to play that? It was. It was harsh, and the, and then I have to get physical with with the boy, and I have to re like really completely lose lose it with him. Um, and that was kind of. I didn't really enjoy that bit. So but, once you once you filmed the scene like that, and they've called cut. I mean, do, do you go over and like talk to them or? Well, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll speak with the director and him before, and just say, "Look, I'm going to really go for this," you know. And uh, just uh, he was very professional. He's a real good professional kid, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, whatever. Just you know, do what you got to do." Uh, it's, it's hard to find the, the the right amount, you know, because at the end of the day, that is a child. He's yeah. an actor. But I want it to be look as real and as believable as possible. possible. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it's just it's just finding that balance. Yeah, yeah, it's finding the balance. Yeah, exactly. Harry Potter has a really, really dedicated fan base. Like they are some truly dedicated people out yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you had any memorable interactions with any people or any weird ones? Uh, any memorable, any weird ones? Oh yeah, loads. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I was doing a comic con in Louisiana, um, in America, and so, uh, this is not the first time it's happened. It's happened a couple of times actually, but this this was this was the first time, but it's not the only time. Uh, uh, somebody came to see. Oh, can you sign my arm with your autograph? On the Saturday, and then they came back on the Sunday, and they'd had it tattooed. So there's a, I have, I've seen people do that kind of thing with people before. Yeah, there's a couple. There's two, maybe two or three people in this world walking around with my my <laughs> signature <laughs> tattooed on their arm. <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of weird, like you know. There's also a lot of people come up to you. This happened countless occasions. Uh, and they just burst into tears, and they say, "Oh, Harry Potter meant so much to me. It changed my life." And, even some people have said, uh, you know, I, I was suicidal and Harry Potter saved me. And I'm always like, wow, like, I, I'm, I'm honoured that you'd say that. And it's not because it's me, it's because I was a part of something that... You're a part of a franchise that saved them. Yeah, that meant yeah. so much to them. But I, I never really know what to say to them. I, I'm I kind of, it's, it's kind of awkward, but, you know, I just... You're happy, but it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of an awkward situation. Yeah, a little bit. Um... But well, you know, you just get on with it. See, have you met anyone that's got a portrait of you on their arm yet? No, nah, I don't know, not yet, no. Because I know some people have a portrait of you on their arm. Really? It's Goyle, yeah. Oh, I'd be interested to see that. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, have you come across anyone who's got, that's got like Goyle on their arm yet? <laughs> <laughs> You'll just whack it out and go, there's Goyle. Um, in addition to acting, you are, you are also a father. Yeah. 
Um, how do you balance your career and responsibilities of being a parent as well at the same time? Well, I'm basically a full-time dad, you know. I don't have a regular job. Um, I'm quite lucky like in, in that way, I guess. A lot of guys, they, they work full-time. They don't get to see that much of their kids. But I do all the school runs. You know, I take them to their after-school clubs. They do judo three times a week. And, I'm, and I enjoy that. Um, I feel lucky that I'm able to do that. Because, you know, it goes so quick. And if you're not, and then it's, yes, it's Zoom's by. So I feel very lucky that I can do that. I'm in a position to do that. Um, yeah, so, but if I, you know, sometimes I don't like leaving them. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, you have to go away. I mean, I haven't had, acting is, is um, yeah, I mean, I haven't got any jobs coming up or anything at the moment, but I have had to go away and travel quite a lot with uh, acting, various jobs, and the Comic Cons. So it's never nice leaving them, saying bye. But, um, yeah, always come back. And they demand that I bring them a present every time. Oh, yeah, don't wear them. <laughs> yeah, you must take the presents back. Yeah. <laughs> Now, as I want to talk to you, they were getting into acting as well. Are they still? Is that something that they want to pursue? Sorry? As last time I talked to you, they were, they were, I think you also was getting into acting. My eldest, has got, yeah. my eldest has got the same agent I had yeah. at his age. Um, he, they, didn't just, they didn't just say, oh yeah, we'll have him. He had to audition to uh, get into the agency. But he's with them. But he hasn't had a job yet, unfortunately. He is good. He's got, he's got a, I guess a bit like me, just, natural kind of rawness in their in their acting you know I, I was never trained how to act I just kind of just be as believable and real as possible yeah uh, and he's got something there's something about him but I'm, he got really close he came, got down to the last two kids for a corner for a corner advert um, but yeah fingers crossed he gets something soon because he's oh you know, god no he will yeah uh, going back to the film where you played, played the stepdad, Jason, being a father yourself yeah. and then playing that role, which was such a horrible person, did being a father impact the role while you were doing that? Uh, or did you, when you went back, when you, when you went back and you saw your own kids, were you like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just so well, I'm not like that? Mm. No, I don't know. Um. I guess in a way, but I was like, you know, when you're doing it on the set, like I was the character, I was that, you know. Yeah, you go into the mindset. I wouldn't say I was a uh, method, but you're in that when you you're in that zone completely. So I'm not even thinking about my own kids um, at that point. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a sad thought to, to think that there are some dads out there like that, and if if not worse. Um, yeah, it's horrible to to think about that. So, when you're going for like different roles, how do you approach like the character development and preparation for the roles? Is there anything specific that you do? There's, to be honest, I haven't had anything quite big enough. Uh, I haven't really had anything that, that big enough or substantial where, I mean, the, the, that, that, that yeah. film we're talking about, that's probably one of my biggest parts I've ever had, that and Marcella. Um, but with Marcella, there was uh, there was so much backstory to the to the character, which wasn't. It was just what the director had told me. He's like, so this is he's a he's a ex soldier. He got dishonorably discharged. He was on the battlefield and had to pull the trigger, and he didn't, and he lost like com com comrades. Um, the director had told told me all his backstory and stuff, and uh, but it didn't really come through. They didn't, didn't really uh, touch on that in the actual series. But I kind of wanted to do something. I wanted to go to, uh, I wanted to go to like an um, old military uh, uh, expats sort of, Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know, like therapy groups or something like that. I was thinking about doing that, but again, it was a nice part, but it wasn't quite, if it was like a lead part or yeah. supporting lead, then I would definitely do stuff like that. Um, I want to do stuff like that, you know, I'm just I'm waiting for something for, to really get my teeth into where I can. 
because I think if I got a lead or a supporting lead in something, then I would I would probably be method. I would, I would throw myself into it all, in every aspect of the part of the character, you know. Now, would you would you prefer that it was something more drama based, or would you prefer it was something more comedy based? Uh, drama, yeah. Yeah, real. Re I, like, I love realism in, in movies. Yeah. You know, Neil by Mouth is one of my favourite films. Um, that's what I look for when I when I watch a film. I want it to look and feel real. I, I watch binge, binge watch things on Netflix. I, I start so many series, but I just don't believe it. I, it doesn't look real. Everything looks too polished or too neat and tidy. The lighting's not right. <laughs> it's like you wouldn't a living room wouldn't look like this. You know, yeah, it needs to be darker. Yeah. You know, uh, it's not no spotlight to living not, rooms. It's not messy enough. Yeah. You know, it's not real, uh, and I just lose interest if it's not like that. Um, the last thing which I which I really loved was a movie called Tramps. Uh -huh. uh, I think it came out in two thousand seventeen. It's, now that is exactly the type of thing that I like. It's just. Even though that the storyline is far fetched, the storyline is far fetched, but everything else is believable, and it makes the, the far fetched storyline more. You don't even you, you just you just believe it because of set decoration, everything, the production. Just the way that the yeah, the, 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 yeah, set. the production design and stuff. It's yeah. So, do you have any long term career goals? Is there anything where you said like, like this? This is what I want to achieve. Uh. Kind of. I mean, I just want to keep acting. I want to, you know, it's quite hard to be proactive as an actor because you've got your agent. And besides changing your agent, it's not like a huge amount you could do. You can have some acting lessons or you can work on your American accent or stuff like that. Um, but nothing that's really going to actually get you, like, I can't go out and speak to cast and directors and I can't find the scripts, you know, it's it's so, so you, you rely on your agent. So it always goes through the agents. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, basically. Uh, so, yeah, but I mean, I guess, I, I don't think there's any actor in the world who doesn't want to win a, an award of some kind, you know, like, yeah, I'd love to win a BAFTA. Who knows? You never you never know what could happen. An Oscar, like, that's, yeah, like, to, to win, like, a, quite a prestigious award for your craft, that's the best thing that can that you can. That's why I'm I mean, aiming for. You know? I mean, watching the trailer of the film that's at the film festival um, the other night, that it is it is beautifully filmed. Yeah, it's done really well. I, I can see that doing really, really well. I Think, hope it does. Yeah, thank you. Fingers crossed. You don't know because um, it it could get picked up by a different film festival and uh, other other stuff. And the the better it does at the film festivals, then the, the better sort of dist distribution deal you'll get. Good. Oh, before we go, I'm going to do this and that questions. Oh, yeah. Because cool. yeah, I know you like these ones. Yeah. Right, you ready? Yeah. Ready? Fire away. Okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Summer or winter? Summer. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Books or movies? Movies. Beach vacation or mountain retreat? Mountain retreat. Pizza or burgers? Burgers. Ooh, controversial. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's hard. That's really hard. <laughs> right. Morning person or night owl? Night owl. Sweet or savoury? Savoury. Android or iOS? iOS. That is the wrong answer. <laughs> Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. That is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Go a round of applause, everyone, for Josh Herdman. Thank you.